So I think we are streaming. Yes, awesome. So it's 9 p.m. It's Wednesday night and it is Wire Lady TV. And this is yet again another evolution of the filming process. So I bought another webcam. So it should be a little bit clearer. Last time the webcam worked, but the quality was awful. So I really appreciate everybody that uh, hopped on last week and sat through the whole thing. I actually might redo some of those tutorials for the feathers because they were really, they turned out really well, but unfortunately the quality wasn't super clear. So I'll definitely do that uh, next time. Sharon's on. Hey Sharon, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm going to just push the screen up a little bit so I don't get confused by seeing there's an actually a delay in the video um so i'll keep it on the chat so i can see you guys when you hop on rebecca and mimi's on and mimi says great quality so mimi was with me today when i picked up the webcam and also i got a new camera for filming regular videos which she just set up for me and i super appreciate it mimi thank you so much that's really so awesome. And Kathy's here. Awesome. Everybody's hopping on. It's fantastic. So let me know um, how you guys are doing. Uh, what's the weather doing? Uh, we just had a humongous uh, rainstorm, which is great because we've had such hot weather. And so it's really nice that things have cooled down. And Linda's here. Hey, this is awesome. Everybody's coming. That's great. So everybody's great. And Deb's on. Hey, Deb, how are you? Good stuff. I'm so glad everybody's on. And as usual, please feel free to chat amongst yourselves in the in the chat. I love it when you guys do that. It's it's so awesome because sometimes when I get distracted with my projects, it's great to have that to fall back on. So uh, if you haven't guessed, I, if I posted in the Facebook group that I'm going to do a little bit of wire crochet today. It was kind of a last minute decision. Um, I thought it would be fun to do a project that I've already done before that you guys might be interested in. And then maybe I'll just play around with, the, uh, with it after and see how it goes. And so what you need for wire crochet is actually this 28 gauge wire. And then I have two sizes of crochet hooks. I have a, this one is a 4.25 uh, crochet hook, which is about a medium size. And then I have this uh, uh, two, I think 2.55. 2 uh, so this is sort of a smaller size. And then what I do is I actually make mixed media cards for the Viva Vida Art Gallery in the Point Claire Village. It's a really good friend of mine, uh, Nadia El Khoury, that owns the gallery. And she motivated me, uh, 10 years ago when she opened the gallery, she motivated me to make some mixed media cards because she wanted everything so, um, so uh, like originals type of thing. So I'll just show you quickly. These are sort of the abstract type backgrounds that I put on the cards. And so these are all hand painted with watercolor. And once I've done the basic shape, I'm going to attach it to that. This one's a fun one. I do some underwater uh, fishy things. And then a little abstract background here. Most of them are abstract. I prefer uh, working with watercolors very loosely. Um, actually, I've never done a tutorial for the watercolor, but I might, maybe I'll do that. That Wouldn't that be fun? If you guys are interested in that, I can always maybe next week or another time on the live stream uh, do uh, a tutorial on how I do this watercolor because there's some very simple techniques to make some really beautiful things. So we'll put those aside for now. And then I'm just going to show you guys a really cool project that I have uh, with this wire. With, and like I said, the 28 gauge is ideal for crochet. And I think I'll just go ahead and use the larger hook because it's uh, a little easier to work with. And all I really do is I just twist it around like that. And then I do like a little slip knot to start. Comment in the uh, in the comments if you guys do crochet. I'd be curious to know if you guys crochet or um, knit. Uh, not necessarily with wire, but with uh, with uh, cord, with uh, wool, I guess. So once you've started your starter uh, a stitch like that, you're going to do a chain. Now you could, if you have never crocheted, you could very easily Google search how to make a chain stitch. And usually I do it quite loosely because you don't want it to get too tight. And basically I'm just pulling, hopefully this is close enough to the screen that you guys can see it. You know what, I'm going to push the screen up a little bit, even though there's a delay, I'm going to push the screen up a little bit just to see if I can 
see how close I can get to this. Oh, there's going to be a bit of a delay, but I'm going to do my best to bring this a little closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm basically doing a chain stitch with nine stitches. I should probably count them. One, two, three, four, five. And you don't actually have to count them. You can just go by eye. So I'm going to do about nine stitches, um, maybe a little bit maybe yeah eight or nine I guess could even be more yeah and make sure oh Deb says she crochets a lot that's awesome Deb you do so many uh, creative things that's just fantastic I love it so we have um, about eight or nine uh, sti chain stitches here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and make my rows so what I want to do is kind of turn it a little bit and then crochet into the first stitch going back track. So all I do, I don't even know if this is a real crochet stitch because I just wing it. So I put in my hook and I pull the wire, like wrap the wire around the hook once and pull it through. So then I have two stitches and then I put the wire around and I pull it through like that. So that's my first stitch. And then I'm going to go back and do the same thing. So we put it through the loop, pull one wire through, put this around, and pull it through. Deb, maybe you can tell me if this is a legit kind of uh, crochet stitch because I just kind of wing it. I, I never really learned how to do crochet. I used to do a little bit of crochet, but just those, you know, those granny squares, they were popular in the 70s. I think I made every member of my family one of those granny square uh, uh, blankets. In fact, I know my mom and my brother still have one of those blankets because, uh, and I didn't do lots of granny squares. I just started with one square and I just work, kept working my way around and around and around until I made one ginormous square. So that was my granny square blanket. I think they're pretty popular. And Kathy crochets too. That's awesome. So what kind of things do you guys crochet? Let me know in the comments uh, what kind of things. And if anyone's watching the replay, please comment also below... Um, about uh, if you guys crochet and what sort of things that you crochet and I think you might be motivated to try some crochet wire after this because like you see it's pretty easy to work with uh, I'm going to eventually experiment with doing other things like I don't know if you guys have heard of tatting which is I guess sort of similar to crochet but I've never actually done it before so I would like to try to do some tatting as well. I think that would be really fun to make those little tatted flowers. I think that would be super cute. And so now we're just going to keep working our way back. So now I, I got to the end of the row. And now I'm going to just check where I'm at now and just work my way back. And it doesn't even matter if you go in the right uh, loop or not. Like it could be really loose and abstract with this. It's really not super important so I'm just going to kind of work my way back and try to each time I go up my goal is to lose a stitch because I want it to start wide and then get really narrow as I go up and I'm finding it's a little tight so I'm just really going to kind of pull it a little bit looser to make it nice and loose so and even like now I just stuck my crochet hook in and I went through two loops uh, instead of one so it really it's almost prettier when it's more abstract so it's kind of it's kind of cool that way just let me see what the comments are doing here I think we're okay Kathy says it's a single crochet oh that's cool so it's an actual official single single crochet well that's good to know yeah, I wasn't too sure. And then Deb says she wings it. So, oh, you, I might be doing a double crochet. I might be doing a combination of both. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super. I'm not super sure about that. Originally, I I knew a couple stitches, like when I used to stitch um, the do the uh, blankets. But now with the wire, especially, I find it doesn't matter if it's just really loose. And another thing I did with the wire, which you guys would find super interesting, is I um. I actually did a kind of a pendant that's wrapped in crocheted wire. So maybe I'll actually do a tutorial for that. I think that would be fun to do a, an actual tutorial on how to do the crocheted pendant, like those little glass cabochons. 
Oh, and Kat's on. Awesome. Hey, Kat, how are you? We're doing some crochet uh, wires. So what I've done here, just to recap, I started with nine chain stitches, and I'm just working my way back uh, to, I want gradually it to become a, a smaller and smaller as we go up. And did I, guys, did I already tell you guys what I'm making? I'm not sure if I told you already. I know Mimi probably knows what I'm making, but um, if you can guess what I'm making, just let me know. Because I might have already told you, but I forget now. So, uh, oh, Kathy, I missed your comment. Currently selling some clutch purses. Oh, very nice. Oh, that's so cool. And sold many slouch beanies. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, beanies are super popular. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, no, I've never really sold any of my crochet stuff other than the um, other than the cards at the gallery. But I've never, all the wool, the wool crochet stuff I've only made as gifts. So, uh, but there's so many funky things you can do. And there's a lot of really cool books at, I was at Chapters Indigo the other day. And there's a lot of really cool books about, um, about crocheted, like all kinds of handicrafts and stuff. So let's see how we're doing here. I'm trying to get smaller and smaller as I go here. So let me just see. Usually goes a little faster than this, so I'm just getting a little bit distracted, but it's all it's all good. So we'll just do, you guys can multitask at the same time if you want to chat or hop on your Facebooks or anything as well at the same time. So see, we've got a bit of a thing going here, a few rows. So let's just work our way back and then we're just going to get smaller as we go up. And then you'll see it's very interesting what you can do with it after. So we'll just work our way back and even if I have to skip a skip a, a loop to make it uh, a smaller quicker like if I find it's like too wide and it's not um, how do you say tapering fast enough I can just skip a stitch or or combine two stitches together or something that's not a problem at all because you do want it to look kind of loose and lacy so that's fine so the idea is you start with nine stitches and you work your way down to about three stitches. So I think we're already getting a little smaller. See, and, and I don't cut my wire. I just work with it off the loop, off the, um, uh, how do you say, off the spool. And then, because you really don't know how much wire you're going to need. Okay, so now I've flipped it over again and I'm going back on itself. So we're going back. And don't worry if the wire crinkles a little bit. It's not even going to show so that's fine. So we'll just work our way back. And Peggy says she just got home. All right, that's awesome. Welcome, welcome. So there we go. We're just working our way back with this crochet. The idea is to make a sort of a triangular type shape. I'm going to probably end up doing about five rows, maybe six rows before I do my next step. So yeah, it is getting a little narrower which is perfect and even if it's not perfect we're gonna we're gonna sculpt it after so see it started quite wide and we're getting uh, smaller as we go up so let's just keep working our way back I'm turned it around and now I'm going back on itself a little bit there we go and next week I'm actually going to be doing my live stream from downtown Montreal because we have a big um Every month we have a get together with this group called YouTube Montreal and it's a group of uh, content creators they call them in Montreal so it's not just YouTubers sometimes it's influencers on Instagram and and other people that are involved with social media but we get together once a month and share ideas and and do in inspirational stuff so next Wednesday if anybody is watching this from Montreal and they like YouTube. Uh, we're having something, it's like a speed dating kind of thing, but it's not actually dating. We're just uh, sharing our uh, our ideas and tips for social media and, and just getting to know each other and what we do and all that kind of thing. So it's like a networking thing, but it's sort of like in a speed dating kind of mid-year type of thing. So uh, Deb said, I made something similar to what you're making to cover a tiny bottle. Very interesting. That is so awesome. Yeah, that's like a little basket. I love that. Yeah, so you're guessing I could wrap it around the pendant. Actually, this one I'm not going to wrap around the pendant, 
but I think um, I will do a tutorial on how to wrap it around a pencil, uh, a pendant, sorry. Oh, now Kathy's curious what I'm making. You guys are going to figure it out really soon. Do you see how it's like wide at the bottom and it's getting a little narrower? So I'm going to just do one more row of a little bit narrower because I really want it quite narrow in the middle. I probably could have done these stitches a little bit looser, but that's okay. I might loosen them up as I get to the middle. So now I've got, I'm down to three stitches. We started at nine and now we're down to three. Okay. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to do another row of three here because in the middle I want it to be uh, sort of around the same width. So yeah, we started at nine, we're down to three. I'll do a couple rows of three. And you'll see once I start forming the thing that you can be really loose with this. And I'll just stick it in there. I'm not even really paying attention to where, where I'm sticking it in there. I just wanna make sure I'm staying centered on the, uh, I think I lost a stitch. There we go. I'll pull that one through. Yeah. Okay. So now we're, we're see we're we're wide at the bottom and we're getting a little narrow at the top. I think I'll do one more thing of three, and then you'll see I'm gonna just make it a little wider at the top too. So we've got one more uh, row of three. Okay. And yeah, one more I think. Make it nice and loose. Okay. And then now what I want to do is, yeah, so now, no, one more. Sorry, guys. One more row of three. So <laughs> you really have to wing it and just go with your intuition of, of how big you want to make it. So we'll do one more row. And if I miss any comments, just uh, bear with me. And you guys could definitely chat amongst yourselves and share any other ideas and let us know what you guys are all working on. I love it when you post pictures in the Facebook group. It's so fantastic. You guys are so good at sharing your work and it's really inspiring. And then you can also share if you find other tutorials that you like, uh, please feel free to share them in the Facebook group too. So here we are here. We're up to here. So now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to do another row, but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add a few extra stitches. And you'll see why. So we're just going to do another little row. Okay, at the top. And then I'm going to do a, a few extra chain stitches at the side. So we'll do one more loop like that. And then we're going to do a couple of extra chain stitches. So we, see, we have a couple of extra chain stitches here. And then I'm going to go back on those chain stitches, okay, because we want to have a little bit extra at the top. So let's go back. We'll go back through those chain stitches and then back across the top. And like I said, you don't have to be perfect about what loop you go into. Sometimes it's a little tricky to access the loops, but you just can just pull them out with your fingernail or, or a hook or something. Okay, so we'll do that one. Okay, we're almost done. And then you'll see what's going to happen. And then we'll do another one here. Okay. Probably what would have been a good idea was that if I just did this basic form before I started and then, uh, and then I could have showed you guys. So let's see, we've done the other one on the other side. We did another little loop here. So now I'm just going to go back on that loop till I get to the middle. Okay, so it, so the two sides are the same width. So we'll go back, maybe just two stitches probably here, and back through this last one. We want to end up sort of in the middle a little bit. I think it's going to be good. So, see where we're at. I think that's fine. It's a, maybe one more stitch. Let's do one more stitch. Okay. Let's do one more stitch. And then, now that we've done that, I'm going to just cut the end of the wire. Okay. And my 
computer's really making a lot of noise, so I think what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to elevate it for a bit. I'm worried it's going to overheat, so let me move this. I'm going to move this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to... I'm going to see, I might go out of the picture for a second, but I'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. And I can all, oh yeah, there we go. So we can just, I'm just going to adjust it a little bit and hopefully that's good. And so now, can you guys tell what it's going to be? So to get the end in, let's just pull the end through so we don't lose our end. We'll just pull it through and we're just going to do this. Okay. And I'm going to just take this end it's a little long, but that's okay. And I'm just going to loop it in here just to center it a little bit. Okay. And what I want to do is just bring it up to the other side. I'm just doing it very loosely. Okay. And it's, I'm just going to shape it a little bit. Oh, I, now I can't see your comments. So let me bring this down. Wait, sorry. Looks like it might be a Christmas ornament. Not quite. Oh, now someone sees a giraffe. Deb sees a giraffe and someone sees a bracelet. Not quite. So there we go. So now I'm going to just, you see what I do now is I just sculpt it a little bit. So that's the fun thing about this. You can actually like pull it like that. You can like pull the ends in out a little bit, like pull it out. Okay. And just, I want this part to be a little wider. Okay, and these, this part here to be a little wider. This part, I'm going to pinch in the middle. Okay, actually, I should do it this it's upside down for you guys. So let me push it this way, in like that, push like that. And then this goes down a little bit, like that. And let's see if you guys can see what it is. A lady, yes, yeah, Sharon, you're very close. It's, uh, it's, it could be on a lady. Yeah, you're very, very close. So there we go. Can you see what it is now? Fancy. Yes, it's a dress. Exactly. So it's a dress and you can mold it to how you want. And what I would do next is I'm actually going to make a little hanger. So I'm going to just take a 20 gauge piece of wire and I'm going to, I'll just bring the image down a bit again so I can see it. So what we're going to do with that, we're just going to bend it, okay, and bend that in. And let's see, I, I should probably measure it a little bit. So if I'm going to do a, a hanger, I don't want it too small. So we're going to go like that. You can make it loose if you want or, or more tight. I, I try to get it a little bit looser. So if we put this up like that, and then I'll just wind that around a few times like that for the hanger and then I'm going to bend this back like that and then I need my round pliers oh, I didn't bring my big round pliers but you know what I could do is just use the edge of the hook to make the round part of the hanger oops let's do it down on this end Okay, so if that's like a hanger. And then because I'm going to attach it to a card, what I want to do is just bend this part back. Okay, we're going to bend it back like that. And then I'm going to trim it. And that part I'm actually going to stick in some paper. And then what I want to do now is actually take the dress and put it on the hanger. So we're going to hold that up to the hanger. And this string is a little long so I'm going to just trim that and then we're just going to sew it kind of sew it onto the hanger like this so we're going to sew it on like this oh I've got a lot of comments here Marisa a dress a while back oh I I must have missed that comment oh that's so cool there we go so we're gonna we're gonna just kind of stitch this on a little bit and then we could go down here whoop Go down here, whoop, get it in there. And the idea is just to stitch it onto the hanger a little bit. And you can just do this loosely. To get to the other side, we can just kind of put the this through and through like that. And we're going to just put it in through. So once we're at the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stitch it in a little bit. And you'll see what I'll do with the other end. I'm going to actually use it to attach it to 
the um, the card and what I usually do is I attach it to the card so here's so far and then we can just if you want like the bust to be a little bigger and the waist to be a little smaller you can just kind of uh, sculpt it like that and then I'm gonna get one of my cards I thought either one at one of these like this might be nice on here and so it ended up being a little bit big so or maybe this one let's just put it on this one because it's a little more um, a regular pattern and so to do that I'm just gonna get a pin yeah so I have a little pin here and what I'll do is just at the top it ended up being a little bigger than I wanted to but it's all good so I'm gonna just poke the little pin in here at the top just to start the hole and then we're gonna take this wire I have some other tutorials that I made these mixed media cards before too so maybe I'll link those up in the description and then you just kind of like adjust it how you want it to be and then this one I find I want it to be a little more of a point so I can actually pull it out with the pliers see if I want it more pointy I'm just gonna pull it out with the pliers wrap it around and then we'll just decide where we want it to be on the card and I'll get my um, pin again so let's stick the pin in there and then we're just going to stick this wire right through the pin like that and then we're going to figure out where the other end's going to be. Looks like it's going to be over here. So we're going to stick the pin in there. Okay. And then so we'll flip over the card. We're going to put the wire back through there into, let's see if this is going to be a good size. Yeah, that'll be good. So we're going to put it back through here. And like I said, you can sculpt this, the wire, so it doesn't, if it's a little bit off proportionally, it's okay because we're, you could just sculpt it back into shape. So we're going to pull this tight on the back like that. And then all you have to do is put the wire back through the paper. So you've caught that one little end there. And then we just want to loop it to the outside, push it back through the paper and make sure you pull it tight. So it stays tight and this you don't even have to tie it off. You can just kind of push it towards the middle. You could trim it if you want to like that. So there we have the card. And then at this point you can still sculpt it if you want to sculpt it a little bit, bit. That's no problem. And that's pretty well set like that. And then I have these beautiful um, metallic cards. I actually can't buy these anymore. I bought. The, I used to buy them online at a store called Clear Bags Canada and I can't find these metallic ones anymore so uh, I'm kind of bought them out of their the end of their stock oh I think I like it on this color so what I'm gonna do is just flip it I have this two-sided tape and then you just stick a bunch of two-sided tape on the back um, I would do a generous amount so it's really going to stick and then we're just going to put it right on there like that stick it right on there center it and then you can just press it around and there you have your crocheted card with the dress so that's so fun so let me see i'm gonna i'm missing all this these comments so let me go hey oh you'd hang it from your tree for christmas that's a great idea yeah and great on the green card there we go. So, so you guys are liking this. I love it. And it, yeah, Sharon, it looks a little bit like a mermaid too. In fact, that would be cool to do. I have done mermaids out of wire, but I, um, I haven't really done a crocheted mermaid. So that might be a really cool idea. So I think, I think that's a really fun idea. And then other than that, if, uh, for experimenting with the wire, um, you can, there's all kinds of other colors too. You can get like a green artistic wire. You can get different like reds. I, I Sometimes I do like the hearts out of reds or different things out of red wire. So that's really cool. But I think for today, I'm just going to stick with the one card. I'm going to try to keep the live streams down to about half an hour when I can. And so that way it's uh, easier for people to hop on and not be up too late. 
But yeah, I really appreciate you guys coming on tonight. That was awesome. And I'll definitely do some more tutorials for how to do some crocheted wire. If I have some already up on my channel, I think I do have one for a heart and one for a couple of other things. So I'm going to link them up below. And I'm also going to do the one about how to wrap uh, like a glass um, uh, a gem kind of bauble thing. Uh, like the one the one I did last week actually was uh, you need a special grinder to make the pendant and but you can use that same pendant and actually wind it with this crocheted wire and it's really cool too so I'll definitely do a tutorial about that and so in the meantime I'm gonna let you guys go uh, thanks so much for hopping on uh, we'll see everybody in the Facebook group I'll link up the Facebook group below for people watching the replay that don't know about the Facebook group the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club, so anybody can hop in that group and share pictures of their work. And I will see you guys uh, next week from downtown, and have an amazing week, and thanks for hopping on. We'll see you